Many Magical Tales is happy to welcome you to the Tales of Farwood Forest, featuring Finley the Fox of Farwood Forest, Willow the Wolf of Farwood Forest, Timothy Toad of Farwood Forest, and Owen the Otter of Farwood Forest. Willow and Finley are also both illustrated books available on Amazon. We hope you enjoy, please like, subscribe or review Many Magical Tales on your preferred podcast provider. Thank you and enjoy. You are listening to Finley the Fox of Farwood Forest. Finley the Fox loved to run and to play. He chased mice, birds, and rabbits around every day. He played in the meadows and bathed in the streams, and napped by trees in shining sunbeams. Finley never strayed too far from his home, from the safety and warmth in his den from the cold. Occasionally, he had to run away from big and scary wolves, or the angry deer who loved to try to squish him with their hooves. But one day he wandered too far from his home, and the wolf pack of the forest had found him all alone. The wolves said to Finley, you know, these are our woods. We told you stay out or we'll keep you out for good. But Finley Fox just laughed and laughed, then turned around and ran and said, Well, you can try to catch me if you can. He ran through the bushes and under the trees, through the hollow logs and over the leaves. But still, the wolves kept up the pace and Finley started to lose the race. Finley was calling for help. He was scared when suddenly there came a large angry bear who chased off the wolves with one mighty roar. He stood on two legs, then dropped down to four. Ah, uh, what is your name? What are you doing and why have you came? Finley was scared, but thankfully saved. He told himself that he has to be brave. He asked the bear to tell him how to get home. He lived by the water as much as he knows. The grumpy bear stared down with a scowl. How should I know? You must see the owl. Go down the trail to the giant oak tree and maybe he'll tell you where you're meant to be. Finley walked alone and saw the fireflies rise and the twinkling white lights all appear in the sky. He heard crickets playing the song of the night as he walked along the path under the moonlight. Finley arrived at the tree and sat down below. Mr. Owl, tell me how to get home. I must know. I'm Finley Fox from the far side of the forest. In the background, cicadas crescendoed a chorus. The owl was silent, then finally spoke. Not all is lost. You must hold on to hope. Just follow the brightest star that you see. When you reach the stream, almost home, you will be. The fox thanked the owl and went on his way, keeping an eye out for wolves, but the wolves were away. He snuck through the bog, said hello to the frogs, and snuck through the logs and stirred up the moths. He heard bats up above, waking up to the night, and thought to himself, what an interesting sight. He climbed over logs, ran, jumped, and hurdled. He even startled a wandering box turtle. He followed the brightest star till the end, when at last he finally reached his nice, cosy den. The end. You are listening to Willow the Wolf of Farwood Forest. In Farwood Forest, where tall trees are entwined, lived Willow the Wolf with a curious mind. She ventured at times, leaving her pack behind on a quest for knowledge. Oh, what would she find? What made the wind and what were the stars? She loved exploring the world in her forest backyard. She found an old tree that was brimming with life, that was full of such beauty that it glowed in the night. She listened to the owls and listened to the crickets, she listened to tree frogs sing, croak, and ribbit. Willow the wolf would wander in the wild. Even though her pack could be vicious, she was generally mild. Willow was young, she was still just a pup. Every night the moon came, she would love to look up. But one night she noticed the moon was all gone, and the night was pitch black, and something was wrong. The wolf told her pack she would be back soon, she was going to find who had stolen the moon. The wolf pack wondered just where she had gone, but they knew her curiosity could not be undone. She crept through the trees until she found the trail. She then noticed behind a tree was a fluffy, striped tail. 
It was Rachel Raccoon digging around for snacks. Rachel was startled at first, then she relaxed. Have you seen the moon? It's gone from the sky, Rachel said. Very curious, Willow. No, I don't know why. You do know it does that every once in a while. I know, but who keeps taking it? I must ask them why. The wolf said goodbye, continuing to investigate. Soon she came upon a split in the trail and had to hesitate. She did not want to get lost alone in the woods. If she didn't return to the pack soon, it wouldn't be good. She smelled something close and found an opossum with her brood. She said, Miss Opossum, have you seen the moon? But the opossum just saw a wolf and ran away fast. The opossum did not want to end up a tasty snack. Within minutes, she ran into a grumpy old badger. When she asked about the moon, he said, Get out of my way, what's it matter? And walked away grumbling that the wolf was being rude. Willow was running out of ideas on what to do. When suddenly she heard a call from off the road. It was Finley the fox who noticed the wolf was all alone. Finley said, Are you okay? Are you lost? Do you need help or guidance? Someone stole the moon and I really need to find it. He said, No one stole the moon. As he kept on looking back, Finley remembered his last encounter with an entire wolf pack. The moon moves in cycles and it changes every night. Sometimes it's at full strength and sometimes it has no light. Give it a night or two, the moon will be back to waxing. Then Finley said goodnight. Talking with wolves was not relaxing. Willow heard her pack howling from far in the distance and she was starving for dinner and didn't want to miss it. A few days had passed and the moon had finally returned and Willow was happy about the new things that she learned. Willow was happy, wild and free, roaming the woods, the streams and the trees. Timothy Toad of Farwood Forest. Timothy Toad was a stout little fellow who never was worried and always was mellow. Sometimes when he chirped, he wished he could bellow like the giant bullfrog in the stream in the meadow. Timothy loved to look at the sky and just think. He also loved eating bugs and worms that were pink. He loved humming songs he made up to himself and rain in the dirt was his favourite smell. Sometimes he'd watch the stars twinkle in the sky. He'd listen to the night creatures start their nightly cry. He ate every bug except the beautiful fireflies and liked relaxing and watching them lift off in the sky. When the sun came up to start the day, he'd hop around and say, Good day! And then he'd play. He'd catch some tasty bugs and have a juicy snack. Then he'd take a long nap beside a log stack. Sometimes he wished he had wings and could fly like a bird. Even though his friends laughing told him, that's completely absurd. Who ever heard of a high flying toad? And what would happen to you if you landed in the road? He thought, my friends have no imagination in their minds. I could fly high in the sky and I'm sure that I'd be fine. Maybe I could ask the owl or ask one of the eagles. Imagine me flying in the sky, majestic, bold and regal. Good evening, my good eagle. Would you help a fellow out? Would you mind taking me for a flight so I can have a look about? The eagle looked at the toad, then lifted off and flew away, laughing. Oh well, I guess my golden eagle flight plan isn't happening. In the end, the only bird who would help was little Sammy Sparrow. And Timothy was chunky and might be too much for him to handle, but the little bird stretched its wings and perched on the toad's back. One foot, two feet, three feet high, and splat. He dropped the poor toad on a pillow of moss. I'm very sorry, sir, he chirped, and then he quickly took off. But Timothy Toad was still very highly excited. He finally flew. He was ecstatic that he finally tried it. Hey, Fox, did you see that? He said to his close friend, Finley. I could get used to that, though it was a bit windy. Finley just laughed and said, Timothy, you barely left the ground. Yeah, but next time I'll probably reach the clouds, and that was good enough for now. Timothy Toad was a stout little fellow, who never was worried and always was mellow. Owen the Otter of Firewood Forest
Owen the Otter was one of a kind, quick as a whip with the sharpest of minds. He joked with the frogs and riddled the toads and could balance a rock on the end of his nose. Sometimes he floated for hours and hours and his favourite weather was summertime showers. Sometimes he rolled around in the flowers or stacked his flat rocks into neat little towers. He loved his songs about delicious fish dishes and come mealtime food was serious business. But on this morning he woke and noticed something was weird. His lovely little stream had all but disappeared. It would have been a mystery if this wasn't the tenth time. Owen had had enough. He was going to lose his mind. He was trying to keep calm, but he was building up steam. That hollow-headed, log-loving, flat-tailed beaver has blocked up my stream. This time he's going to get a piece of my mind. I'm going to drill it into his head that this isn't fine. I thought I told you a hundred times you're ruining the woods. You're blocking up my water. This isn't any good. Oh, no, I'm very, very sorry, the beaver said for the tenth time. I don't know what's wrong with me. I can't help it. I don't know why. I just see flowing water and I know it needs to stop. So I just get to chewing until the water flow is blocked. Well, I want it fixed by the time I get back. And will you please remove that ugly wood stack? He went swimming upstream, chasing the fishes, when suddenly the woods started acting suspicious. Owen had noticed that something was wrong because all of the birds stopped singing their songs. All of the frogs stopped singing along and the noise of the crickets was suddenly gone. Owen had noticed a shadow approach before he had noticed it got very close. It had large yellow eyes and a beak for a nose and sharp yellow claws in place of its toes. A golden eagle as large as could be had snuck up to Owen and come through the trees. But Owen knew better than to stick around longer. He dove down quickly, deep down in the water. He stayed underwater for almost six minutes, down where the eagle could not come and get him. He came up and saw the eagle still perched on the shore. He started to panic like never before. The eagle stood still and said, I'm not going to eat you. Then Owen said, well then, let me get fish to feed you. I can get fish myself. Thanks, that's not why I need you. Odin the owl said I must come to see you. Me? Why me? The otter was flummoxed. He thought that for sure he'd be in the eagle's stomach. I am told by the owl you were the last to see the fox before he disappeared. I have come from the north. A wizard sent me here. I am told the fox would be walking north with a black bird. He replied, No, sorry, it's been weeks and I haven't heard a word. The last time I saw him, he was telling me to keep a watch on the woods. But for what? He wouldn't say it didn't sound good. He said little else, except that it's time he had to go. Then he walked away into the woods. That's about all I know. I do hope he's all right. He's a pretty good friend. I will let him know you came looking for him if I can. The eagle said, A shadow from the north has now been seen in the south. For many years it had been kept at bay until now. There are things in this forest now that do not belong. Things long forgotten except for stories and songs. Thank you for your time if you see the fox come back this way. Tell him I need to speak with him. I have many things to say, but chances are by now him and the raven have made it north. Either way, keep an eye out for him. Delay we can't afford. Owen agreed and told the eagle goodbye. I must return to my stream, he said with a sigh. The eagle took off flying over the trees, continuing the search as far as he could see. It was the strangest day he could ever remember. Guess that's what I get for being too smart and too clever. Just then, he heard a strange noise in the stream. Something was creeping and did not want to be seen, but he could see glowing red eyes hiding in the reeds. He ran towards his home as quick as he could be. He came up on the beaver and shouted, Run! You have to follow me! The beaver saw the creature coming and let out a little scream. What is that thing? Why is it chasing you? Where do we go? But the otter cut quickly and ran inside the beaver's home. Quick hurry, block the door, we can't let it in. The beaver was panic-stricken and didn't know where to begin. The otter started shoving sticks in front of the door. The beaver finally started helping and started adding more. They heard the creature climb on the top of the beaver's lodge. Then the creature stopped moving. Its noises became odd. They heard wings of something from above and the creature's noises paused. The golden eagle had returned and grabbed the creature in its claws. It took off into the sky and flew away, carrying away the Whitkers.
The beaver said, that's the strangest thing that I've ever witnessed. And that's saying something if you've ever met my family, Owen said. Well, I guess we're safe for now, as safe as we can be. Owen told the beaver to keep an eye out and be wary of strangers. I believe this is just the very beginning of the darkness and danger. The beaver just chuckled and said, Well, at least now we're friends. Maybe, but that all depends on if you block my water up again. Owen returned to what he loved best, dining on fishes and getting some rest. But from then on out, he cautiously kept out an eye for the eagle or the fox to come back at any time. The End Thank you for listening to The Many Tales of Farwood Forest Part 1 Brought to you by Many Magical Tales Written and produced by Christopher Durr